Good afternoon. We call this June 23rd, 2022 meeting of the AMS Policy Agreement Committee uh, to order. The time is 1.32. We'll do a roll call. Ms. Altel. Present. Mr. Dunbar. Present. Mr. Trombley. I'm here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I had a Heritage Land Bank meeting that went very long, so very I, I, there's no way I could have made it over there in time, so I'm on the phone. Very good. Ms. Bogan. I'm here. All right. Uh, we have a quorum. Aaron, will you please do the public announcement? Of course. All immense committee meetings are open to the public, and the public is provided an opportunity to comment at each meeting. Business items are first presented by staff or consultant. Then the committee is given a chance to ask questions. Then the public is formally invited to comment. Each participant will have three minutes to speak on their topic. After the public has been given their chance to speak, it will then go back to the committee for action. Uh, and a couple of housekeeping items. If you're joining us virtually and you're not a member of the committee, please turn off your camera when you're not speaking. If you're joining us by phone to mute and unmute the microphone, press star six. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Do we have approval of the agenda? I move. Do we have any changes? Uh, yes, there is one change to the agenda to item 6A, the AMATS Transportation Network model presentation. Uh, the consultants will be unavailable today, so we'll be moving that to July. So we'll get a presentation on that more. Thank you, Aaron. Are there any objections to adopting the agenda with said changes? In this approved. For agenda item four, we have before us the minutes from May 26, 2022 for approval. Do we have a motion? So no. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Moved by Ms. Altel, second by Ms. Pokin. Are there any changes or discussion of the um, previous minutes? Any objections to approving the minutes? Hearing none, the May 26, 22 minutes are approved. Moving on to action items. We have action item 5A, 2023 safety targets. Aaron, will you be presenting? Yes, it will be me for a few of these items. So the first item is the 2023 safety targets. So uh, we've seen these before for 22 and before. So every year we are required to establish a safety target ourselves or support the state in their safety targets as required by FHWA. Uh, so at previous years for this target, uh, AMATS has uh, supported the state in their safety targets. 2023, we're recommending this, we continue to support the state in their safety targets. Uh, AMATS has talked about setting our own targets for our area. Uh, we were waiting until we do our AMAT safety plan, which the RFP for that is in purchasing's hand right now. So we're hoping to get started soon on the safety plan for AMATs. Once we get that done, our intent is to try and set our own targets within our boundary. So for now, uh, staff and the technical advisory committee are recommending that we support the state in their targets. I will note, sorry, really quickly, I did see some hands go up. I will note, uh, as outlined in the memo, both in our memo and the attached DOT memo, DOT and PF did not make significant progress towards 2020 targets for the non-motorized fatalities and non-motorized serious injuries because there was a data gap. Uh, I've been told that that data gap is being closed rapidly because APD is helping to address the concerns. There's a, a pretty significant delay between when uh, information is reported and when it gets certified. And so that is being worked on uh, by DOT, by the state and APD. So that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, um, with Aaron uh, on this memo, two things. First, I want my comment is I, I definitely agree with the idea of us creating our own safety targets that I think should be significantly more aggressive than the states. Um, and then second, when I'm reading this, uh, for example, uh, fatalities less than or equal to 70 on this um, on this uh, um, graph here, is, is it a table here rather, is that 
if it's the states, is that them saying 70 statewide or 70 within our area? Statewide. These are all statewide targets. Okay. So when we support, we can say we support the statewide target, but even if we did a great job and only had 10 traffic fatalities, if they had 100 out in the valley, we wouldn't make it. So I guess I don't understand why they're not broken up into, you know, like this is your portion of the state's goal. Does that make sense? Uh, it's required that they set one target for the state as an entirety. So that's how the feds kind of denote the process for it. Uh, when we were setting these targets, it was understood that to be able to, there's not the ability to drill down into the data to be able to assign the fatalities for our area only. Um, and that's why we want to do our own safety plan so we can identify that data and be able to say, okay, we are setting this target, which will still support the state's targets no matter what, but we're setting our own target that's limited to our area so we can account for the fatalities. Please note it'll only encompass the AMATS area, so we'll not include Girdwood and south of uh, Potter Marsh on the sewer title. Interesting. Because it's outside of our boundary. Okay. Well, yeah, I certainly support that work, and I think it's important that we have our own targets uh, divorced from these targets. But if that's what's available to us now, then I'll support us supporting that. Mr. Chair. Ms. Hill. Thank you. Uh, so my question is, since this is a statewide target, and I heard the challenges with drilling down into the data, but what's the intersection between the target, the data, and the distribution of um, highway safety, the HSIP funding? I don't know if someone can answer that. Um, well, I can speak a little bit, but maybe somebody from DOT can help. I do know that part of the safety performance measures, uh, if you don't meet so these performance measures are included in the HSIP annual report. So they help contribute towards, or HSIP really helps contribute towards meeting the targets. Mm -hmm. If the targets are not met and a penalty is imposed on the state, as has happened here, then the state is going to be required to spend more of its HSIP funding on vulnerable road users. So I've already been reached out to by the state because they have, uh, there's a, a certain percentage threshold of HSIP funding that has to be spent in those areas that have high numbers of fatalities and injuries um, to help address those concerns. So what you just said leads me to believe that we do have a breakdown of the areas of high fatalities and injuries. So we don't just have an aggregate number, we actually have some kind of geographic basis for diving at least a level deeper to know where the, H the HSIP funding might be uh, directed or targeted. HSIP oh. does its own analysis okay. on each area. Uh, so they they do an analysis for each corridor where there's concerns and they do that. But it, it's <clears throat> my understanding, and please help me out if I'm wrong on this. My understanding is that it comes to the certification of the data. So we get the data and then it's certified as a target overall for the state. There's not a certified number for our particular area uh, or, you know, Matsu or anything like that. And so that's why we're behind. So the certified data that's out right now is 2019, I believe, and they're working on 2020 certified data. Okay, and, and the reason for my questions is, is if we're going to look at doing our own target for the MPO, it would be really interesting to know what the intersection is between that and um, the HSIP data for mm -hmm. where those particularly vulnerable populations and corridors are to know how what tools we have available to meet whatever localized goal so thank you. Thank you for that. Um, really quickly, one thing on that. So sorry, Joni, I'm going to call you out on this, so correct me if I'm wrong. As part of the non-motorized plan, Joni worked very closely with Scott Thomas over in traffic on HSIP related to non-motorized users, and they actually did input information to, was it the corridors, uh, the non-motorized corridors, and kind of provided HSIP safety data for those corridors. So for the non-motorized users, we at least have some data available and the safety plan wants to kind of drill down into that a little more so it can help identify what is the cause and then helping to identify actual an action plan on how to address that. Oh, that's good to know. And I'll do some offline follow up with Jody about that because I'm really curious what the um, non motorized corridors encompass because we do have a lot of pedestrian deaths and I don't know if some of those are coming are considered to be using a non-motorized facility at the time or a motorized facility. So I'll, I'll reach offline, uh, but I think so that kind of information will really influence um, where we want to set our target um, here in the year. Thank you. 
Thank you. All right. Um, are there any comments from the public? What is the will of the committee? Move to approve. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moved by Mr. Trombley and seconded by Ms. Zalatel. Are there any objections to approving the motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Action item 5B, destination UMED, public involvement plan. Aaron, are you presenting? I will not. You get a break from me for the next two. Um, John Cecil will actually be presenting on this. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm the policy commander, John Cecil, senior planner with AMATS. And uh, it's my pleasure today to uh, present to you the um, public involvement plan for what we're calling Destination UMED, which is the uh, UMED Transportation Demand Management Plan. And uh, we're trying to get away from the jargon and acronym of TDM, which becomes very confusing. Uh, so we're trying to convince people to look at, understand it as destination event. And so the, the cover memo that I uh, presented or prepared and presented uh, to you today uh, discusses briefly uh, why we have a public involvement plan, which the, um, we have a contract with Nelson Nygaard, they're a national firm that does uh, TDM work across the country and they're one of the leading, leading firms to do that kind of work. Um, so the, the plan itself covers uh, key, key milestones, uh, who the audience is that we're trying to reach, tools and strategies for successful engagement with the stakeholders and public. And as far as the stakeholder uh, engagement process, so far we've had one uh, advisory committee meeting. We have four planned over the next uh, 10 months. Uh, this is a year-long project. And uh, we had a very successful meeting with, with our advisory committee as well as the project management team. We had Nelson Nygaard here. Uh, they did an on-site visit. They also conducted uh, some individual stakeholder uh, meetings with folks uh, like from uh, UAA, APU, uh, hospitals, Providence, uh, school district. And uh, those have been very successful and they are currently uh, following up on those with uh, phase one of the project, which is collect collecting data. Uh, and as you just discussed uh, earlier, you know, the data is very important uh, and it will be uh, very important for our purposes to better understand uh, what's going on in that uh, district. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll close and uh, ask if there's any questions. Um, but the uh, we'll say that the technical advisory committee and staff do recommend to you, the policy committee, that uh, the you met the approach. Sure. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I had um, looking on page 12, there's a list of stakeholders here, and I spoke with one of them, and she requested two small amendments. So I'm not sure what the amendment process is on a document like this, but they are you know, very small text amendments. Um, kind of, can someone explain to me the process of how we amend a document like this? You can just do it as part of the approval. So um, if you have discussion or other things like that, we need to wait until after the public gets a chance to weigh in. Um, now is just a question opportunity for them. So you can amend it once you have a motion on the floor. Can I make a motion now then? Uh, we have to do public uh, comments first. Sounds good. Ms. Altel. Thank you. I do have a question about the boundary area. I, oh. I re realized that this is uh, based off the community council boundary, but that my direction is correct. That northern boundary on Northern Lights, you know, um, I see, you know, it cuts through um, near Tikishna Park. I mean, just kind of 
not too far away is a regional hospital, uh, North Star Behavioral Health, and some other medical infrastructure. And so I'm curious why we didn't include that beyond, you know, that in this study versus um, using just using a community council district boundary, which doesn't necessarily capture all of the assets related to um, the circulation of traffic for medical emergency medical purposes. Um, so yeah, excellent question. And this came up with the technical advisory uh, committee as well. And previously, prior to the project getting kicked off, the boundary was discussed. And uh, initially, we were looking at basically the entire goal for the purpose of this project. But the policy committee uh, narrowed it down to essentially to the boundaries of what was what came out of the 2016 UMED district plan. And so that's what this reflects is, is the, uh, the boundaries. Now, it doesn't it doesn't prohibit us from having those conversations, reaching out to Alaska Regional, for example, um, and, and talking to them about the outcomes uh, from this. But uh, the specific boundaries are as indicated in the plan. So in what ways can um Will the plan take into account um, those other major medical facilities, particularly regional, and the impacts um, of that facility kind of within this study, um, or and or the um, impact of people coming in off the highway to access emergency medical services? Yeah. Well, we will, we can, and we we will reach out to them to. Get the best data that we can to understand what what that means. Do you also get EMS data about like transit times and things like that? that so if there's yeah, a response, well, some of the I'm sorry, we didn't cut oh, you off. I was just saying, um, there's a response coming off the highway. And yeah, accident. we're talking to okay. EMS, police, and fire uh, about response times and, okay. and those kind of, and number of trips. That's all part of this data collection effort that's going on in phase one. Okay, then I, I think that satisfies. Uh, my, my question and, and my concern. Thank you. Mr. Dillmore, you had a follow up? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, uh, Ms. Saltel, for reminding me. I had my own notes on this and then I got distracted by the other conversation I wanted to have. But with regard to these um, orders, <clears throat> this is, of course, this is my district and um, my few, my former um, community council district actually is seeing foothills, which is just to the East of here, and there was a pretty extensive conversation between Sing Foothills and the university, uh, university area of retroceding everything east of Boniface to Scenic Foothills. Because, and I'll say, I've, I've knocked on every, well, every super voter at least door in that district. And I don't think that that neighborhood east of Boniface considers themselves to be humane um, or, or anywhere near the, the folks that are closer. And so I know, I mean, there's there's a finite amount of time and money you have to do mailings and things like that, I assume. And yeah. so if you were looking for a way, and maybe it's too late down the road, but if you were looking for a way to, to limit the size or change the shape of the district where you could pull in part of the area she's talking about, I think you could take off the residential portions east of Boniface and without, um, I, I, again, I just really don't think that those neighborhoods feel themselves to be part of Med. Um, I, I think especially the ones that are closer to um, Baxter Road and Canberra Airstrip Road feel themselves to be more closely tied to sort of the Baxter Bog area, if that makes sense. Um, and so, well, I, I guess I'll just let you respond to that. Do you, do you have any sense of that, or would it save any money if you were to move that eastern border to Boniface? I, um, I, I don't think so. Uh, we are in a tight you know, one year, essentially 14 month time frame. We started in mid April, so okay. we're on the way and we have a limited amount of funds to to do this project. So I don't think that change would, would necessarily benefit us uh, one way or the other, but. We so you're not doing mailings to these areas then? Not, not yet, no. There are there's a mailing list that people can tap into on we have a web page. Uh, they can get uh, type in their contact information, and we, as we have materials that we send out notices okay. uh, to folks. 
to do that. And we will also be reaching out to the Federation as well to, to the larger community so that they all know um, what's going on uh, with, with the project. Of course, you know, as the summer happens, it becomes problematic trying to do that. But so, so like th this border here doesn't mean that every, you know, every household in that border will get a mailing. Well, they pr probably will uh, at some point. Um, so but you're saying that taking those thousands of homes or many hundreds of homes, you know, restricting the border and removing those homes won't save any money on mailings or anything like that? Um, I don't know, Aaron, can you help me out here? I mean, it that? could, it could. The, the problem is, is we're actually following the Muni's UMED district plan with this board. So to sit here and just kind of slapdash make a change while we're in the middle of this project kind of goes against or supports what people always accuse AMATS of is not following the plans. We are following the UMED district plan. So my recommendation is if this border is not acceptable to people, then we need to update the plan. The, the Muni needs to update the plan. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think the Muni reached out to the Scenic Foothills and the Scenic Foothills, which is a, 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 a volunteer organization with a budget of $70 a year, was like, we, we're not going to go through the process of absorbing as many hundreds of homes. And so we have a district plan based on a scene on a, on a community council map that doesn't reflect the neighborhood. Um, but I mean, if it's not going to cause a, a big deal, I, I guess I don't, it doesn't bother me. It's just, it does feel like there are parts that are being left out that um, my colleague, Ms. Alatel kind of highlighted. And then we're also bringing in a part of the town that I, I don't feel has, I mean, a lot of people there live and work at, in the UMED area, you know, but so do people in all of these, this, this area, you know, there's not that part east of Boniface, I don't feel is any particularly, um, uh, I, I would actually say there's probably more people working, living and working stuck in Heights that are work, living, working, or working at the hospitals that there are in that area. But anyway, uh, no problem. Uh, if, if it's, uh, if we're this far down the road, and I guess we can't make that kind of amendment, then fine with that. If it's tied to the, the plan. All right, I guess that's uh, questions or comments from the committee. Any other questions or comments? I guess so. I'll make the amendments afterwards, and we can talk about them then. So you know why I pre questions. Okay, first one. All right, any comments from the public? Uh, Nancy has her hand up. Go ahead, Nancy. Yes, thank you. This, the same concern with the boundary exists on the south side. Tudor Road is, um, you know, the neighborhoods on either side of Tudor Road are integrated into the UMED district. So I'll just add that. Please, John, go ahead. Yeah, so we do include the... Um, Community Council of the South of Tudor, they were one of the four support uh, community councils who are primary uh, to this project because they are adjacent to the UMED. So that was taken into account. Yes, my comment was that the boundary is drawn down to the left Tudor Road, the study area boundary. Yeah, well, as we discussed earlier, that's based on the 2016 Austrian. I think, yeah, it's from uh, for the public comment. All right. Um, any additional comments from the public? All right. What is the will of the committee? Oh, um, I move to amend. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Move to approve. Or do we approve or accept here? Approve. I move to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion was moved by Mr. Dufour, second by Mr. Alatel. Are there any objections to approving the motion? Yeah, I make a move. I move to amend uh, on page 12. Um, although, ironically, I didn't get this request from him, but hopefully he won't mind. To add the name uh, Peter Mijos 
videos. Videos, videos diagrams. Yeah, yeah. The M J O S. Uh, from the uh, Rogers Park Community Council. Just added to the list of um, stakeholders here. So the primary contact is Peter Muse M J O S Rogers Park Community Council. And what's his title? I'm good. President. Right? He's the president of the council. All right. Um, objection moved by Mr. Dunbar, second by Mr. Altel. Did you have further? Wait, never mind. We got a vote on this. Yes. Well, I, I mean, I guess I could, I could explain it. Uh, if they just feel that they want to have a voice, as although again, ironically, it wasn't him. So if you reach out to him and I include, include it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part of you is he? He's part of a group, isn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's the Rogers Park Community Council person. Yeah, we did. It's a, uh, his name was inadvertently left off because okay. this was completed prior to our contacting him. I have difficulty. He didn't respond to my emails or phone calls because he had no idea who I was. <laughs> we eventually connected and he was invited to the uh, stakeholder meeting. Great. That's great to hear. So I guess it was then. All right, um, so we're voting on an objection. If all those in favor of uh, accepting the objection? Amend. Amend. Sorry, amend. Oh. And I was <laughs> All right, that'd be correct. All those in favor of the amendment to add a uh, name, uh, Mr. Muse, to page 12. Uh, Ms. Altel? Yes. Mr. Dunbar? Yes. Um, Mr. Trombley? Yes. Ms. Polkin? Yes. The amendment is passed. Uh, I have another amendment <laughs> to the final page of this document, page 18, where it says public study draft Public review, draft, sixty-day review, date April twenty twenty-three, duration sixty days. Um, the stakeholder wanted that change to April first. Um, they felt that if it came out later in April, there would be there wouldn't be enough time um, to pass things at their main meeting. So I guess yeah. second. Yeah, thank you. Change April to April first. What, what's the current date? It's just April twenty twenty three. So this makes it more specific. April first, twenty twenty three. All right. So we have a uh, amendment, a second amendment, uh, second by Mr. Dunbar, passed uh, by second by Ms. Altel to change the date from April to April first. Um, Vote on that amendment, Ms. Altel. Um, sorry, right. before we move forward, discussion real quick. So the the only thing I have against that is often these schedules are shifting, and putting an exact date on there makes it very difficult because we may not actually achieve that date. Um, what if it's April second of twenty twenty three or April third? And I know it sounds ridiculous, but we do have members of the public who are watching us constantly to find any fault. So. Often we just say the month to give us flexibility in that regard. I understand. I think the concern is that if it comes out later in April, there won't be enough time because the only real opportunity for. The. Um, So I will um, alter my amendment to April 4th. Do my second will agree? Yes. Okay. And I, I hear what you're saying, Aaron, but I think that is actually, I mean, that's sort of the point of the amendment is to make it a little more certain. 
the reason is so that the community council is going to have time to draft, and in some cases they have their own requirements and the introduction to get them for their main group, so you can pass them in time for the June deadline. So that's why they you know, they feel like they tend to April 15th. Or, you know, God forbid, April 30th. Uh, this would be unacceptable. So I'll change it to April 4th. Because also, I just realized April 1st is a Saturday. So I don't want to do that to you guys. <laughs> April 4th. All right. So we have a change to Amendment 2 um, to change the date from April to April 4th. As, I'm sorry. Suggested by Mr. Tim Carter and seconded by Ms. Uh, I have a I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Trombley. Yeah, so Aaron, could you could you walk me through this process if um, if it's not April 4th and it kicks to April 5th or April 15th or, you know, just in the process, things get bumped. Um, can you tell me what what would we need to do as as a policy committee to make sure that we do meet that? Do we have to come back and amend this? Do we have to call a special meeting. What would be the process? That's why we generally don't put specific dates like that in here because it gives us that flexibility. If we don't meet the date, um, I, I don't know what we would have to do because we don't normally do that. So my understanding is we could come back and amend this, but that would take an entire month to do. So it, it doesn't really make sense to do that. I think just leaving the date in there and then we'll try our best to meet that deadline. But, you know, things shift all the time. Or if a public comment period goes longer or more work or more time is needed to review documents, then that date might shift on its own. OK, so in order to change this date, you're telling me it would take it would take a month to change it if for some reason it got bumped past the fourth. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to change the document mm -hmm. itself, we bring it back through the policy committee for approval, which would be depending on when it happened. Yeah, the next policy committee meeting, so they could take I a understand. month. Okay. Ms. Altel. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I think that hopefully those who are working on this project would see the delay coming and it wouldn't be a surprise and could date the month to bring it back so we could reset expectations as well as when that final study were to come out. I appreciate the target date of June 2023, but if that means we have all of the comments due over the summer where we basically disenfranchised community councils from really doing the work we them to do, then maybe we should look at pushing out that final study date um, at that point. I mean, that, I think that's the reality of this work, and I think it would be very appropriate to come back and say, hey, this is the situation. We see we're going to run right into the summer. Let's push it back and just reset the expectations knowing that participation during the summer is usually low and that this is this is a very important um, project to those who are in this area they've been asking for this a really long time so i'm comfortable with the not later than april date because i think we have tools at our disposal to mitigate the concerns that i'm hearing um uh eric has some staff from amats that i think we can mitigate that as long as we're tracking it thank you um, sorry, I'll bring it up just so everyone's aware. We a lot of the reasons we have these final dates in here is because of the federal agreement HWA in the state for AMAS, the Muni, and the state. Um, so it's not just as simple as push it back. It's redo, you know, change those agreements and get FHWA to prove that our ending date is now pushed out an extra few months or so. So just everyone's aware it's whatever you guys decide of course just be aware that there's a lot more that goes into it than just coming back to you guys and saying let's push this out a few more months in summer so based on that can i actually make a motion to amend the amendment um to uh no later than february 15 2023 for the public comment period to begin so I'll second it for the purpose of discussion. All right. So we okay. have uh, an amendment to the amendment, second amendment. Any other discussion? I'll pass speak to it, please. Please. So you know that time. Actually, could you could you could you restate the amendment? I I don't I, I don't understand. You're going back to what it was. 
No, uh, it, I amended it to go even earlier to no later than February 15, 2023. Um, the purpose of that is that will put us somewhere in the middle of this community workshop work um, so we can kick off the public comment period. I mean, that is one of the purposes of the community workshops as well as to get community feedback. To have these two things coincide and work together doesn't seem odd. Um, it also accommodates um, any potential delays. You've got some wiggle room in there so that you can still um, hopefully provide community councils a full 60 days um, and not some the extra project deadline. So I think it's a way to balance the interests of both uh, and the potential complications of pressing, pushing out the project deadline while also still getting what you're looking for, which is uh, having public comment, public feedback. Um, I believe that community workshop is actually before the draft document is done. It's helping to finalize the draft document, so it won't be done in time to release it to the public at that point. So what I'm hearing here is that this is the schedule it's set. And there can never be any adjustments to it without extreme complications, and that's an unacceptable response to me um, if we're making a policy choice here. And so if we're making a policy choice here that's meant to foster public participation, then we need to figure out the right way to meet the needs of both the project as well as to get that public participation. Um, it seems that it would be possible to figure that out. Um, and so if there's a better suggested date, because what I'm hearing is that the April date in and of itself isn't sufficient or setting a specific date because pushing the project is a no. So I am up open for suggestions, but by tossing something out, I'm hoping we can spur that conversation to find the right fit. Mr. Dimper, thank you. Uh, I guess my question for staff then um, is this date, I'm, I'm not totally um, understanding what it is in the sense is, is this when you will deliver the public study draft or is this when you will release the public study draft for the public to the public for comment? John. I think it's the latter. Okay, so when do you think you will have the public study draft complete? I I really can't answer that right now. Well, I mean, clearly it's sometime before April. Right, right. And as um, Aaron alluded to, we're expecting to get public feedback and comment at that third workshop that we can then feed into that draft. So um, it's it is it's a very aggressive type timeline. I agree. And, um, but it is what it is. I, can we work with the consultants and see if we can push it back to March instead of April? I, I can certainly do it. That gives us another month. And then that'll give us our 60 days, and then that'll be complete before um, the June deadline and before. Uh, summertime. I, I'm certainly comfortable with that. Although, it, you know, it occurs to me that I asked for April 4th and now pushing even earlier to March. And, and so I, I am a little, um, I guess what you're saying is the flexibility of being able to release at any time in March is more important than the fact that it's a little bit earlier in the set date in April. Um, I'm fine with that. That's fine. I mean, that's why I mean, the amendment to the amendment is to figure out where is the spot. Okay. So, how about instead of amend, we can't do a tertiary <laughs> amendment. So, how about we withdraw both of our amendments? So, I'm going to withdraw my underlying amendment the second degree. Yes. If I can direct it up here, Mr. Chair. Please. I, I move to amend that date to strike April and put it in March 2023. Second. Can I ask a question for discussion, Mr. Chair? Please. The 60 day duration, is that something that's set by the feds or in code somewhere? Or, you know, is that something that needs to be exactly 60 days? I mean, what if 
we start in March, we have until June. What if the comment comes in the, like the 62nd day? Like what, what flexibility does the public have with that number? So uh, the feds don't set that. They have only specific timelines that they set for specific documents. So that's on us. And we set 60 days typically because um, the public's asked for us to do more than 30 days, which is our minimum that we have for most documents. So uh, yes, we are flexible for more or less, depending on what you guys would like to see. Um. I, I don't I don't know enough about this. I mean, I haven't been here long enough to have strong feelings about that, about the 60 days. Do we do we often encounter community councils, for example, that feel like 60 days is too tight when they try to comment on something like this? I mean, we get comments when 35 days or 30 days is too tight. Um, and so that's why we try 60 days for some of these documents. We actually have the flexibility to um, do a little bit more time. Um, I haven't heard anyone saying 60 days is too sh is too short of a time, but okay. uh, if you guys have, then I guess we're flexible on that. That's fine by me. Okay, then I'm fine voting on this message. All right, then if I can go through all my notes here. We've got uh, Amendment 2 was withdrawn, Amendment to Amendment 2 was withdrawn, and we have a new Amendment 2 that says we would like to strike the date from April and move it back to March. Was there a specific date in no. March? Okay. Staff, you have a date for March. Is there any other discussion on Amendment 2 by the committee? All right, we will take a vote on that. Ms. Zalatel? Yes. Mr. Dunbar? Yes. Mr. Trombley? Yes. And Ms. Polk? Yes. That uh, amendment passes. All right. Are there any objections? Any other objections? All right. Thank you. Hearing none. Motion is approved. With you got to vote on the new motion. motion. I'm sorry. We have to vote on the on the original. Sorry, the original motion. Once again, we'll vote on the original motion. Um, Ms. Alfell. Yes. Mr. Dunbar. Yes. Mr. Trombley. Yes. And Ms. Bogan. Yes. That motion also has passed. <laughs> All right. Moving on to action item 5C, BPAC appointment. Aaron, are you presenting this time? Nope. You won't have to hear from me. Joni Will will be presenting. All right. Time. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, yep, so we are would like to are seeking your approval to appoint Jesse Doherty to uh, the BPAC, our Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. She'll be replacing Carol Fink. Um, Carol's been serving on our committee for over 10 years, I think, since its inception. Um, so we want to give her a um, huge thank you for all of her service and great work on the committee. And she recommended that we replace her with Jesse Doherty. Jesse works at the um, at Department of Health and Human Services for the state of Alaska in the section of chronic disease prevention. And she is um, was the program coordinator for the Governor's Council on Disabilities and Special Education, focused on employment and transportation. Prior to that, she worked uh, for nine years in the section of women, children, and families health in a variety of positions and in her spare time she enjoys getting outside wood turning which i don't know what that is but that sounds interesting uh fiber crafting and baking and um she, i believe she's on the phone today if you all have any questions for her so um that's all i have thank you thank you are there any questions or comments by the committee Are there any comments from the public? Yes. What is the will of the committee? Second. Thank you. Motion is moved by Mr. Hall, second by Mr. Dunbar. Any objections to approve? Great none. Motion is approved. Item 5C, 2050 MTP, Performance Measures and Criteria. 
Baron, is this one yours? Uh, yes, this is. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. So you know that we are working on the 2050 MTP, AMATS is a long range transportation plan. So uh, we released the performance measures and criteria that are before you today for a 30 day public comment period, March 1st through the 30, 31st. We received 199 comments from 12 individuals or entities, and then we update the performance measures and criteria based on that feedback. So you have the actual performance measures and criteria themselves, and then you have the comment response summary. So you can see all the comments and how staff responded to them. Uh, once uh, we're done with the performance measures, they'll be integrated into the plan itself and they will help with the next part. Same with the criteria, which is the project scoring. We are in the middle of a project nomination process right now. Last I counted with the projects that we've carried forward from the 23 through 26 tip, we have 350 plus nominations and we still have another few weeks left of the nomination period. So staff will have a lot of work to do to get the nominations ready and scored for the next phase of the project. So before you today are the performance measures and criteria with the changes outlined in the comment response summary and in the documents themselves. These uh, technical advisory committee reviewed these and recommended approval as amended in the documents. Thank you. Um, so in the uh, beginning of uh, criteria, performance measures, comment response, summary, all that is on one. You guys can kind of decide how you want to vote on it. If you want to do them separately and do performance measures first and vote on that, and then criteria and vote on that, it's kind of up to you or if you want to do it all at once. It might be easier to separate them out and do a motion on the performance measures with any changes you have, and then do a separate motion on the criteria with any changes you have to make it a little easier to follow along. But it's up to you guys. All right. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? I have a question. Ms. Altel. Thank you. Um, so talk me through right now where we're at in the timeline for the development of the MTP 2050. Um, is this um, is this a must pass today item or does it put a, if it's delayed for any reason, does it put a wrench in your schedule? If it's delayed, no, it wouldn't put a, a wrench in our schedule. We would love to have it passed today, of course, so we can continue moving forward, but we are still in the nomination period. Um, I would stress that if it's not passed today, that I, it needs to be passed next month uh, because we will close the nomination period by that point. We'll start getting the projects in order and we'll need to know where our criteria is at to kind of get that ready and get the scoring sheets ready for the committee and stuff like that. So if it is delayed a month, it won't ruin the schedule. Okay. Thank you for that information. Mr. Dunbar. So, yeah, my, my question is going to be. Uh, very similar. So, in in that month, so there's a lot of comments here you haven't had a chance to respond to yet. Is that fair to say? Or they integrate in, or they have all been responded to and integrated? All of them have been responded to and integrated in. Um, if the comments were submitted during the comment period, if they were submitted after the comment period, they wouldn't be in this comment response summary. Are you aware of any of those kind of comments? Not, um, no, maybe. <laughs> well, it's hard because people like to send an email an hour before meetings to say, look at these comments and I don't. I'm familiar with that. So I, I, I don't really count those. I haven't received anything outside of the traditional. You didn't respond to the comment the way we wanted it. We want it this way thing, so great. And so just for my, my education as I'm learning this process, but the comments come in and then these have already sort of been reviewed by staff and by the technical advisory committee or just the staff. So once comments come in and we close the comment period, everything's entered into the comment response summary of this. Yeah. Um, and then what we do is, or for this go around, what I did is I parsed it out to the project team and asked them to help respond to everything. So each person on the project team got a portion of this comment response summary to provide responses to because they each have their kind of area of expertise. So it gave us a lot more uh, of an integrated approach to this because each person kind of provided their input on it. So it was a more fascinating way of doing it this go around. We tried it instead of me responding to everything on my own. Um, once that's done and we have all the responses and changes from staff, 
We then bring all of this to the technical advisory committee at their meeting. They review it and they make any changes uh, to what staff's recommending to the edits to the documents. So what you have before you is staff's recommendations and then the TAC's recommendations, which were to approve it as is. They didn't have any additional recommendations on top of it. Ms. Altel. Thank you. So I know it's a lot of work to respond to all of the comments you all receive. Um, why is there no reason given for the no recommended change? So it's just no recommended change, period. And I think what that's really hard to do is then have conversations with those who are seeking the recommended change as to the rationale of AMATS and the Technical Advisory Committee who's pushing these through and then also potentially the policy committee who also would adopt this. Um, and so I'm just curious why that's the practice. Uh, the rationale would be under staff response. The column before the staff recommendation. So if you see the first one here, it says mm -hmm. staff agrees. Thank you for your comment. Recommend no change. Or if we do have something in here that's no change, you know, for comment six, it says goals and initiatives are good. And it says the 2050 MTP law have a section talking about maintenance, both pavement and winter. So it'll already be addressed under that section. We could have expanded upon that. We recommend no change. So our rationale is in the staff response itself. Okay, and those rationales uh, are reviewed by the technical advisory committee and they say those are sufficient, those are fine. Yes, they didn't have any edits to anything in this document. Okay. There was discussion um, on a few items, but there was no changes. And, and I guess you I may, I may make this comment. You know, I. I appreciate that and I appreciate that this is a lot of work. I also really appreciate the community that engages with us. And so just trying to make sure I got the whole picture of how we're capturing uh, the community engagement in particular. Um, because I think that that's something that's really important is that the community has to live with whatever it is that passes out of the policy committee. So. Uh, and they don't always have all of the technical expertise that some of the other um, agencies who come in have. So I appreciate getting more information. Um, so a couple of the comments I got today, and I'm, I'm looking through this Excel to see what they were in here. Um, there sort of, sort of seems to be a perception that there is no target for vehicle miles traveled. Then I see at least one staff comment where it seems like EMT is something you guys do use. Do you have any explanation for why they might do that? This perception? So we actually haven't set targets for the performance measures yet. Okay. The reason is we need to know what the performance measures are before we do the work to set any targets. Some performance measures may not actually have targets in this go around because we don't have the data available. My thought process as the project manager on this was I wanted to stop constantly be like, we don't have the data, we can't do it. Instead, get the measure, recognize we don't have the data, and then start doing the work to get the data so we can start setting targets go, you know, moving forward. Um, VMT is in here. Uh, we do have the ability to calculate VMT, and we're going to be looking at VMT as part of it. We just haven't set the targets yet, and we're going to wait until we know what the performance measures are. Because it's a lot of work to set targets, and if you guys cut performance measures out of here, it, we would need to know that before we start doing all the work. Um, okay. Are there any other comments from the committee? All right. Any comments from the public? Uh, yes, uh, Nancy, please. Yes, um, if the policy committee and staff aren't ready to um, establish performance measure targets now, I'm wondering whether the committee might include in its findings that these are still in um, some sort of draft form and are in need of further revision to incorporate emerging targets as well as to 
incorporate local adopted plans. And specifically, we have a goal um, of Vision Zero. Um, so that's, you know, that's an adopted plan. And from that, there should be a target. We have an Anchorage Climate Action Plan. From that, we should be prepared to adopt a target for greenhouse gas emissions. And then with regard to land use infill and redevelopment, um, we should have some measurable targets there as well. And as noted in my letter to you, one that's pretty easy to measure is percent of developable urban acreage that is roadways and parking. The more lanes and especially the more parking you have, that's a good measure of how auto dependent you are um, and how compact and walkable you are. And then the other concept that the public has repeatedly referred to as the 15 minute walkable neighborhood, which is pretty detailed to go into right now, but it's a concept used in many other communities and it's something that can be, can be measured. Um, so these are, again, uh, new to you perhaps, some of you today, but uh, if you could adopt an intent to refine these um, performance measures further to include emerging targets, that would be uh, some reassurance to the public. And I think just one more thing, I think that's in keeping with the concept of um, the Federal Highway Planning 3C criteria, which is continuing comprehensive and cooperative planning. That's, that's the watchword that AMATS is um, presumably operating under. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Thank you. What is the will of the committee? Move the postponement to July. Second. I'll speak to the motion, please, Mr. Chair. We have a motion by Mr. Altel to postpone till July, and it's second by Mr. Dunbar, please. Thank you. Um, I, I think I would like the opportunity to um, provide some language um, and, and work cooperatively with the AMAT staff to possibly provide some of those amendments that have been requested. Um, and especially around the local plans, I see them somewhat referenced in here, but I think, you know, as we move into the uh, targets, um, making sure that those local plans are fully integrated. I think this is particularly important in an MTP where we don't have a separate Anchorage based long range transportation plan that reflects the goals and objectives of our local planning efforts. So I, I would like a little bit of time to work on those things um, in hopefully cooperation with the AMAT staff. Okay. Mr. Dunbar, do you have a comment as well? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so Aaron, I, and again, I'm familiarizing, familiarizing myself with this process. So we just heard from Ms. Pease that she had a few specific um, suggestions. And so I take it during public comment, we don't have a direct response from the staff to, which makes sense. So we're doing the sense of two. But do you have any response? I guess if I were to like sort of restate some of her ideas. So putting it to make some note that it's in draft form, for example. Um, and this will speak to whether or not I think we need to delay speaking to that motion. But do you think that we should have some indication that it's in draft form? Um, do you think that we should have? Um, some measure that captures uh, developable land that is um, parking and, and uh, car infrastructure. I think I saw in here you said that parking is outside the purview of what Payne has, so then we already have your answer in there. Um, and then um, I think the, the third one, but can you answer those two first? Um, so in terms of how the process works, everything's always in draft until the final document. So even though we have the goals and objectives, even though we have whatever you guys do with the performance measures and criteria, what we're basically asking is for your blessing to move forward with them as is. That does not mean that they will never ever change between now and the end of the document. So they're always in draft form. The criteria we're asking for your approval, so they're less in draft form because we'll be using them at some point. Um, so 
Yeah, I can go ahead and put something in here that these are a draft form, but it's kind of already understood that they're in draft form. And if other changes come through the process, we can integrate those if possible. If there are things like let's remove everything and start completely over, sure. that's not as possible. But if it's tweaks to language or we miss something, that that's easy to integrate as we go along. I don't see a problem with that. That's part of that flexibility as we move forward. And in terms of infill redevelopment targets, that's really completely outside of us as AMATS. If this were a local transportation plan, that would be more appropriate. Um, if it were a measure to talk about um, something related to, you could put a measure in, I'm thinking on the fly on this, so please excuse me if it's not 100% accurate, but you could have some kind of measure or criteria in there that looks at a project coming along and if it's adding lanes, how much developable land is it removing? That's pretty easy to do. Um, and that that's really more appropriate for a criteria than a performance measure. Because the criteria is where you want to make sure the projects don't do. Because if you put it in the performance measure, you may not get what you want out there. In terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, we already say we're going to do a target for it. That's been addressed multiple times now, but we have more work that we need to do before we can actually get to the target itself. Um, we have a uh, new model that we're putting together, a strategic planning model that will help us look at greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we're working with the Muni on what they're doing, the report that came out with recently about where they're at with it. We're, we're working forward on it. We just don't have it ready at this point. Um, was there anything else you wanted me to? No, I think that's sufficient. Thank you. All right, so uh, before us, we still have this motion moved by Ms. Altel and seconded by Mr. Dunbar to postpone um, the 2050 MTP performance measures and criteria until July. Are there any objections to approving this motion? <coughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll object, but I, I, I just want to know, help me understand again, Meg, what does postponing to July do in your, for you? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, it allows me hopefully to work cooperatively with um, AMAT staff to capture the um, intent that targets will one both uh, be based on local plans. I, I see them reflected somewhat in the conferences, but I, I think we need to be very clear about it. Um, and that there's also the intent to include the emerging targets. Um, so just some language clarity, I think it gets to some of the concerns we've heard um, and doesn't really, hopefully one won't be a, a lot of work for AMAT uh, staff because I intend language um, and I'm just not prepared to do it on the fly, but I think there are important additions to add context to the overall uh, performance measures and um, targets that are before us. Got it. And Aaron, that that this this does this put you behind in any way? Does this postpone project? Does it do any of that? Um, Are we going to have to kick back other things? Like, is there a, you know what I mean? Like a collateral event components to this? I actually see that uh, the consultant Juan Lee is on. Juan, would you be able to speak to this? Uh, she is the consultant helping me run this project, and hopefully, I didn't misspeak by saying this wouldn't cause a delay. Juan, can you speak on this? Yeah. Hi, Aaron. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, there is a bit of a schedule impact, so I want to address that a little bit with the delay. I also want to make clear, and this is more of a process thing, but what the policy committee is reviewing today is this updated version that includes the red. All the red is the updates based on public comment. So this has already gone through the TAC and the policy committee, I believe, in February. And we had a work session on this in January as well, a joint work session with the TAC and the policy committee. So um, I think it's a point of clarification. I just want to make sure process wise uh, what is before you is this is an updated version. We brought it back because of how many public comments we heard. We wanted to make sure that you saw it and uh, if you had any further comment for us to uh, make more edits before we move forward. In terms of addressing the, the schedule impacts, um, I think what's really key is the prioritization criteria because the nominations are going to close July 11th, and those have been open for almost two months now. Um, and we need to use that prioritization criteria to score the projects for our next steps, which is putting it into the 
the vision eval or strategic model that Aaron talked about, um, and then also the travel demand model tasks are dependent on, on the things that you're looking at today. I think a month's time, um, I think we can deal with that. We've had other delays in the schedule um, that we're trying to integrate in Jostle as well. So I just wanted to add those things and hopefully that helps with some of the, the questions or the add to the discussion. Yeah, so just to follow up, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I think I kind of heard two separate things there. You said that it won't cause a delay, but at the same time, you have a July 11th deadline for for projects, but our next AMAS meeting wouldn't be until the end of July. So can can you clarify for that, that for me again? Yeah, so you're reviewing two things today, and I think the, the request is to delay both things until July. Our nominations uh, for projects that the public's been working on is is the deadline is July 11th, so the prioritization criteria, not the performance measures, which are up here. Um, those we you know we need to use to start scoring the projects, and I think staff has about a month to do that. Um, so the delay for the prioritization criteria would impact that part of the MTP performance measures. I think we could. Uh, we can deal with the month delay if you want to take it up next month. So we have another month to review it. Um, if it helps to have another work session, we could do that. Um, but I just was going through the process of of uh, what's here before you today. OK, so for one, it would impact the other one. It wouldn't. Meg, Meg would you be fine with moving forward on the one that it would Im would not impact? And then so. And then uh, not postponing the one that we would see an impact on scoring those projects. May I ask a clarifying question? The staff yes. for answer that. Um, so the things I want to do and the clarity, the kind of policy direction clarity I want to provide, where is that best suited to be? Um, and does that align with what your consultant is hoping the outcome will be? <laughs> it's kind of a tough question because often policy helps drive things like projects that you select. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be setting policy, then you probably want to make sure that your criteria matches up with that policy level change. So. So an additional question. Mm -hmm. Is there a way in which to I mean, I, I've, I've expressed, I guess, my concern on the record that these targets are based on local plans um, and that we are clear, you know, that there's this intent to um, include um, emerging targets. Is there a time, another time in which we can incorporate that into the MCP where it continues to provide that ne what I think is necessary guidance for the projects um, beyond this moment? Uh, I say yes. Juan, am I misspeaking when I say that? No, you're correct. Where is that point? Um, well, it depends. So, sorry, there's it's a lot to it, but we actually have a section in part of the MTP where it's a policy and action section where you set policies on things. So that could go there, but if you're basically talking about setting some kind of policy on what projects you select, that's really done when we do the project nomination, scoring, ranking, and selecting of projects. So that's the next step, basically. Um, so you... Sorry, it's really complicated what you're asking. So that's why I'm trying to make sure I understand where you're getting at. Because you're wanting to ensure, sorry, let me phrase and make sure I can do it in my mind. You're wanting to ensure that projects we select or performance measures and targets we set follow local plans. Okay. Um, I don't know, Juan. Do you? Sorry, I'm I'm kind of blanking on. Is is that now, or is that kind of our next step when we do project selection? Yeah, I guess I'm unclear on on the policy direction that for the performance measures. So there's a couple of things I think I just want to summarize. Um, so we did take this through in February. We have the work session in January. What's different between this MTP's performance measures that you have before you is that we are going beyond what the previous MTPs have done. They've only looked at federal targets, performance measures. We are adding in all the local ones, which are shaded blue, 
So there's a lot of blue in this spreadsheet here that you see on the screen. Um, and then all the red is the updates we made after the 199 public comments came through. So this has already been through a public comment period and the TAC and a policy committee review and approval. You, you approved it, that's why we were able to send it out for public comment. So this is an updated version with all the red to clarify. And there was a lot of places where we felt like, yes, the public is right. We need to update those sections. They didn't make sense or or they weren't defined properly. It is technical, it is transportation planning. Um, so I guess now is the time to, to talk about that um, and see where, and maybe you haven't had enough time to look at the updated table. Um, and I think we have, we have, we can, we can make it work in the schedule. We could, you know, move some things around if you need more time on this. The prioritization criteria is, is is the one where we need to start using it to score the project. So if there's comment on that, I think we need to have that um, reviewed and updated before before we start working on that in July. Well, I'm going to ask that we vote on the motion I've made. Um, and my final comment is it seems that every time we get to a decision point in AMATS that there is no room for any kind of a pause to add or have policy considerations added, which is the function of this committee, because everything is always running up against the calendar. I think it's a, a flaw in the process, frankly, with the MCP, and it's very frustrating um, we're in, always stuck in a continual loop. Um, well, no, we can't do that because there's not enough time or it will push everything or it'll push it back to public comment. Um, at some point, the policy committee needs to be able to have the opportunity and the ability to weigh in with policy-based um, viewpoints that actually affect what is reflected in the MTP. So I uh, would like to go ahead and continue with a vote on my motion. Mr. Dumbo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I appreciate the, um, the Ms. Lee, uh, her clarifying comments about the performance targets versus the criteria and the performance targets being something that performance measures, I should say, not targets yet, um, something that we could perhaps delay. Uh, and I realize that most of our conversation today has been about the, the um, measures, and I feel we might have neglected discussion about the criteria a little bit. Now that I realize the criteria are about to be put into very um, immediate use on July 11th, right, for the project nomination. A little after July, right? We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, the nomination is closed July 11th, and we got to get everything ready, so it'll take us some time after July 11th. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how much time it'll take us to get everything ready. We're working quickly since we have so many projects. Right. And it, it, Occurs to me, it just feels to me like the, this criteria is where, you know, pardon the pun, but the, the rubber hits the road a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more directly. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to read through all of the, the red, the additional, I assume that the red inserts are what has changed Correct. in the criteria. Yeah. Um, and have, uh, and I, and again, this is, this is, um, I probably won't be able to, to, to reach in a month a uh, level of edification I need, but you know, we've had very, I, I, I was under the impression we had pretty significant changes to federal guidance based on the structure bill and other things that have sort of coming down the last year. I think that's not the case. The criteria haven't been, the criteria have not been impacted by changes at the federal level. Not with IIJ, no, okay. not really. Um, okay. All right. Well, I, I um. So practically speaking, if we do vote to delay the performance measures, no issue. But then the criteria that are used in July before our next meeting is on twenty eighth. Would they just be the old criteria without the red inserts, or how how would you what would you do? We wouldn't be able to use them until you guys approved them. So if this were delayed until July, yeah. July would be our must pass month. 
right. so we wouldn't be able to delay it anymore. Okay. And until you guys approve it at your policy committee meeting in July, we wouldn't be able to use it. Um, but it, it sounds like from from Ms. Lee that really need these criteria in July to do some kind of work. And I'm, I'm not fully understanding how you're going to use this in July. Well, I'm not sure exactly. Here's the problem. I'm not sure exactly when we are going to use them. We could use them before your guys' next policy meeting. We could use them after. Because what has to happen is we have to close the nomination period. Then we have to take all 400 plus nominations that we're going to receive, because I know we're going to get more in between now and the 11th. And we have to organize them, make them readable because they're just comments in a sheet. We have to actually put a scope and we have to put or put a description and a title and get it all ready and put it into scoring sheets. I don't know how long that's going to take. That could take more than the few weeks between July 11th and when your guys next policy committee meeting. Is it the end of the world if these are delayed until July? I don't think so. It's just it's very uncomfortable for us because we've already had a number of delays. Sure. And unlike other things, we have no ability to negotiate the close the deadline of this project. We cannot push the deadline of this project out any past where it is because it's in federal regulations. We have a drop dead date to get this approved. So um, it's just concerning for us for the schedule. So if it is delayed, I ask that we make sure we get this approved in July and I'll do what I need to to sit down with everyone and get the comments and edits and things like that. And then if we get it done in time, we can bring it back through the TAC to see if they have any questions or comments about it before we bring it back to you guys as well. So we can keep it multiple public process at times. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. So before us, we have action. Yeah, item. Oh, sorry. So Aaron, you said earlier that there were space to amend this after it's adopted. Um, are the sorts of changes that are being discussed something that can be amended later if it's adopted now? For the performance measures, yes. The criteria, no, because the criteria will have to use them. And if we start using them, we can't make wholesale changes to them. Because I, I, I don't want to be in the middle of using the criteria and have you guys say, OK, we need to delete this criteria and add a new one in and we have to kind of start the whole process over. So. If that makes sense. Any other discussion on the. Objection? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just I just I just want to say I. I I agree with I agree with Meg that I feel like for the policy committee, so we're supposed to discuss policy, but we're butted up against these timelines which prevent prevent us from discussing policy. I don't know what the fix is there, but until we come up with a fix, we're kind of butted up against these timelines. I so I I I agree with the delay, but it's like I now we're delaying other things and putting it at risk. So it, that's the challenge for me, and I can't I can't support it because yeah. of that, but we, we do have to fix that. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, so before us, we have action item 5D, uh, which was performance measures and criteria. We had a motion to postpone till July by Ms. Alatel and moved by, sorry, moved by Ms. Alatel and second by Mr. Uh, Dunbar. We had an objection by Mr. Trombley, and so now we are going to vote on the objection, which is to not postpone till July. Would we just take a vote on the affirmative motion instead of by unanimous consent? Yeah, you would just vote on the motion to delay. Um, Mr. Trombley's objection is just a force you to do a head count, basically, yeah. or a call or a call for vote now. Yeah. Roll call. Thank you. Very good. We'll have a vote on whether or not we're going to postpone until July. Ms. Alatel? Yes. Mr. Dunbar? Yes. Mr. Trump. No. I'm sorry, Ms. Pogan. No. And I'm going to vote no. So the motion fails.
go back to the, the item and decide what to do with 5D. So I move to approve the MCP project prioritization criteria. I'm, I'm dividing the two and a half. Okay. Sorry. Um, and Mr. Chair, if I may, I do. Sorry, you. Oh, oh, criteria. Thank you. Yep, I do have an amendment. Can we get a second? Mr. Dunbar. Uh, Mr. Dunbar. I think you were contemplating them before. Second. No, the second for the main motion on the prioritization criteria. You said second? Oh, yeah, I heard something. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was what he was asking for. Oh. Uh, All right, any comments on? Sorry. Really motion. Are there any objections? I actually have an amendment, please. Um, I move to amend on page five um, under improves ADA accessibility. It currently reads project hinders accessibility for disabled people. I would like it to read project hinders accessibility for people experiencing disabilities. Okay. Second. The objections? To the amendment. Should we go back and do comments by the public now on the do we have to sorry second John, do we have to go back out to public comments on since we've we've already done public comments okay. and stuff, but I Staff comments. If it's on, I was just gonna say I um, appreciate uh, um, Mr. Trombley's um, statement about keeping these moving because I, w I did hear one mentioned there was a work session on this earlier. I believe she she already mentioned that there was at least one or two work sessions and um, committee meetings on this. And I know how hard staff is working to keep things moving and so. And but I do also hear Ms. Alice's comment about. It feels like always there's no time to comment, and that is true for AMAPS a lot of times because we have the federal requirements. But um, I just want to say I appreciate the committee keeping this moving because um, as staff, as AMAPS staff, and I've been trying to get my own plans through, um, it's just it's very difficult um, when things get delayed. And so uh, anyways, that's all I want to say, and um, it is important, but I know that the staff has worked really hard on this. And I also feel like the committee that went through in creating all of these performance criteria did a really good job initially at trying to incorporate the local planning efforts, um, even though it may look like there are some areas where it can be improved, and that's I'm sure that's true compared to what it has been in the past. It's a very uh, comprehensive effort at incorporating all the local plans. So it may, it may not appear so on first glance, but um, if you take a good look at it, there's a lot of local plan integration, so thank you. Mr. Dumbo. Thank you. A, a question for staff. Um, so, because uh, I think we're back on the main motion now. Uh, two questions. One, what's with the plus zero? I, I, I mean, I understand why why criteria exist, but why even specify something as plus zero? Because and that's if you're doing a scoring system, one plus zero just mean no no change. Mm -hmm. And the second is. On the improved ADA accessibility, it says project purpose and need, but then the second one say project propose and need. Is that just a typo that kind yes. of goes through part of the document? Yep, that should say purpose and need, not propose and need. Okay. Um, so I think that I don't know if you do Scrivener's errors here, but like the assembly we might have to actually make a motion. We'll, we'll make changes. We'll make those error or the changes for the propose instead of that should be purpose and need. And could you explain? Can you explain to me sort of what the plus zero? Why? Why are those sort of called out in that way? What was the function of a plus zero in a scoring system? Um, 
for me, it's being able retentive and making sure that there is a possibility to score a project regardless. Um, but it helps when we do the scoring sheets because not putting a number into a column causes problems for us when we do the additions and the summing and everything like that. So actually having a zero in there is easier for us to keep track of it. And it also denotes that this project is not getting any points because it's not meeting the criteria. It, I, it really drives the emphasis home that you have things you have to meet in order to get points for it. So it may not seem like it matters, but it, it kind of does matter in the long run. No, that, that's a satisfactory answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Ms. Alto. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to respond really quickly. I just searched my email. I didn't see a work session beyond the TIP work session. I did not see a performance majors or criteria work session come through on my calendar. Um, it may be while I was out in May, and if that's the case, that's my apologies. I think my calendar just rejected everything. Uh, while I was gone, um, but I do attend the work sessions when there's the opportunity, um, and I'll say that's not really the time to dig into and, and wrestle with the language, though. Um, it's more overviews, questions about the particular projects in ter terms of the tip. Um, so in some ways, on the policy side of things, I understand why it works great for like technical advisory committee. But from the policy perspective, it's it's a little bit different, and we really are awaiting those public comments to come in to really get that public perception. Um, so I just I wanted to raise that. I think that that's the tension with AMATS being a very technically based thing, yeah. but also guiding transportation policy for um, an area where it impacts the public. So I, I think the tension's good, and I, I hope we can just keep working together to figure. So um, I do appreciate um, the way that this particular criteria is laid out. It's really easy to read um, and it's really easy to digest where you're headed with it. Um, and I think we need to give just a, a belated like ongoing shout out to John Weddleton because he worked a lot on this um, in the past to update this criteria. It was a tip criteria. Oh, tip criteria. Oh, but, okay. But, but it drives. It's fed into this yeah. one. That's um, right. To help with this. So yes, shout out to Mr. Weddleton because he did really push us to get to this yeah. significant change we see before yeah. now. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if I may ask a question here. I am completely lost. I know we got a uh, motion <laughs> for um, the criteria and uh, passed with an amendment. Um, are we done with 5D or we still have something more? You have the main motion the main on the motion criteria on itself. We did that. As amended, you did the amendment one. You need to do the main motion as amended now. Just for the criteria. Yes. Great. So for action on 5D, uh, of course, we have the criteria motion. Do we have uh, a motion to approve the criteria as amended? No, no. Right. You don't need to do another motion. You can just. You already had a motion on the table, so you can just do a vote yeah. on the motion. Sure. Another vote. Yeah, you just do another vote. A second. <laughs> All right, we will vote on approving the criteria as amended. Ms. Delta. Yes. Yes. Mr. Trombley. Yes. Ms. Bowman. Yes. The motion passes. So are we now finally done with the point? Yeah. No, nope. just with the criteria. To approve the uh, 2015 MCP performance measures. Yeah, that's fine. So. We're going back to action item 5D to approve a motion before you to approve the performance measures. Do we have a motion? So no. Sorry. Are there any objection to approving the performance measures? Seeing none, motion passes. Yeah. 
Bill action item 5E. Response to a letter to Anchorage caucus members. Mayor, are you presenting this? Yes, I will be the one presenting this one. So um, as you know, we received a letter from the members of the Anchorage caucus, uh, some members of the Anchorage caucus, and in that letter they had specific things that they were asking the policy committee to do, uh, make some changes to the tip at the time, uh, you know, remove the 92nd Avenue undercrossing from the tip, to add a greenhouse gas emissions or an emissions study, to add a study for integrating transportation and land use, and to add a complete street study for A and C in there. So it was discussed as part of the TIP at that time. Those actions didn't go forward, um, but uh, the policy committee did ask for staff to write a response letter to the memo uh, from the members of the Anchorage caucus who submitted it. And so before you today, is that response letter for any questions, comments, concerns uh, that you might have and or hopefully approve, or we can delay for another day if you need to make changes. There's no rush on getting this one approved. Thank you. Andrew. Are there any questions by the uh, committee? Please. Um, tell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the TIP is not approved. We approved it to the point of sending it out for an interagency consultation. It'll come back before us in August, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, so my comment is I think we should delay this letter until the TIP is approved because it's not in its final form. I understand uh, the concerns expressed by the caucus. However, until the policy committee takes a position by passing the TIP, I believe this letter is premature. All right. Any questions? Any additional questions or comments from the committee? Yes, sir, Mr. Dunbar. Yeah, I'll just say I have um this 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 is also sort of new to me. This is um I'm surprised that we have to approve you responding, you the staff responding to something. Um and thus sort of put our temperature of acceptance on it. There might be things in here that I don't completely agree with. Um, and so I will support uh, the motion to delay. Um, was that to a time certain? It was just until it was. No motion's been made yet. Yeah, we haven't gone through the. the right, right, right. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll wait to hear from the public and then uh, speak to any motion if one comes. Thank so you. really quickly on that, why it's coming in the way it is, the original memo went to you all as the policy committee. So the response is coming from you as the policy committee. It was just staff was asked to draft a letter for you to review to send back to them. So that's why it's being done this way. Any comments from the public? Uh, yes. Uh, this Nancy is I, I think Nancy may be offline now. Go ahead. No, Cheryl, uh, Nancy I raised can comment her. just really briefly. Okay. I can just comment so really Nancy. briefly because I've got it. Um, so I sent a, a last minute letter. This um, raises concerns about the policy role of the policy committee, and it implies that the role of the policy committee is very tightly constrained because DOT um, uh, has always had um, complete control over the design of projects within DOT corridors because DOT uh, controls more of the funding. And again, I urge the policy committee to investigate that question with regard to the mandate to have continuous, um, comprehensive, co cooperative planning. That's that's the goal. And if all those hundreds of millions of dollars of DOT are um, not subject at all to the policy committee's input. That means that DOT policy is really driving or catalyzing a whole lot of impacts to the system. And um, AMATS is just in a minor response position, and I don't think that's the intent. So I've got to sign off, but thank you for the opportunity to comment on that aspect, and Cheryl will comment on some other aspects. Thank you. Sorry. Uh Ms. Richardson. Hi, thanks. As usual, Nancy did an excellent job. 
identifying the issues. And I guess my only contribution to that part would be, can AMATS establish a process to resolve these issues uh, of uh, continuing cooperative, comprehensive planning? Uh, we, we are not seeing it and we would like to see it. So what can you folks do to establish a process to resolve the differences of opinion between Anchorage and the State Department? Um, and then I'll go ahead and mention the projects that were referred to in the letter. Um, it seems to, that the PIP was an example of how AMAT's decision making is done in a black box. And the fact that the Eagle River uh, Road was brought forward um, as an issue of parity so that they would get their fair share of the AMAT's dollars uh, came out of left field. Other neighborhoods got zero, um, so it's not really clear why. It's not clear how that was fair or transparent. Um, then, of course, we've got the yeah. A and C Street complete streets, which is still a thorn in South Edition's side. Basically, we were told, oh, you can't have that funded because it has not been modeled yet for its impacts on the system. Now the excuse is, well, really, the study was never um, nominated per se, you know, the whole project was nominated. Um, but of course, any project includes a study phase. And so it, it seems like, uh, again, not very transparent and, and uh, not very honest with the public. Um, the whole uh, issue of the um, $200 million mile at Scooter and Vanguard is on the table. Um, I think that is, again, something we really need to wrangle with um, and not waste that money damaging a low-income neighborhood with an off-ramp and a new collector street to make it easier to get from the Diamond Mall over to Fred Meyer. That's, uh, it just seems like a very big sore thumb uh, for, for uh, AMATS to bear. Um, and I'll, I'll close at that. And I want to thank you folks for taking on some hard issues today. And uh, hopefully we can start resolving some of them. Thank you. What is the will of the committee? It goes on to the September meeting. Second. Yes, yeah, speak to Mr. Chair. Agree. Are there are there any objections to approving the motion? Um, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, that was premature. Yes, you may speak. Oh, okay, that's fine. I was like, well, if there are no objections, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> that's right. have the votes vote. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to just provide quickly the rationale, which is that we'll have already pushed the tip out. Then we can make any edits to the letter to reflect what's actually in the past. The tip that passes and the members will know um, how they have voted on the tip at that point. And because it does reference specific projects, that's it. Thank you. Yep. Are there any objections to approving the motion? As amended. Hearing none, the motion is approved. As amended. So the motion is to postpone the letter until September. All right, Aaron, are there any other action items? No, there are no other action items. Ten item six B AMAT's website. Aaron, you presenting this one? I will not, but Christine Shuni will go ahead and do a quick overview of the changes she's made to the website. My apologies, I have to run, so, so thank you. Just making sure that um, you can see it. I, if somebody online can tell me if they see the AMAT's uh, main page, it's stalled on my computer while I'm checking that. 
check on that. Just, yes, yes, just oh, yes. yes. Thank you. Um, so we've heard comments on just um, the navigability of the AMAS website and just how can you find things. So we've kind of done an overhaul so that our main page will always look like this. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a little bit of it. And if you have comments, if you hear comments, please bring them to us. We'll always have our upcoming events here. These events are tied to the MOA events page. So every time we put an event, it automatically appears. When it's over, it disappears and it's tied to the MOA page so that you'll see it on the main um, municipality page as well. Um, we require to use Microsoft Teams for our virtual meetings. Um, if people are new to Microsoft Teams, sometimes that can be a cumbersome platform, so we'll have some static directions on how to join a meeting, how to participate in the meeting. That will always be in the sidebar. And then the main um, navigation of the AMETS website is set up in different buttons based on meetings. So you can go here to look at all the meetings, meeting materials, um, you can look at the core project products of AMAX, which is your MTP, your TIP, your um, EPWP. So each of these buttons that now is on the one main page will take you to hopefully what you're looking for. And then all the um, particular projects that have a website that is not, um, and it's an outside website that down here in the next section. Um, and then we will work. We will be working on eventually having some sort of interactive tips so that when you want to look at where a project is, you don't. You'll be able to find it, the link to it from our page. Um, that's something to look forward to in the future. I think Sean Maskey mentioned that in the TAC meeting, um, where by the projects that AMS is funded, so that the public can see that. That's it. Just an overview. If you have comments, bring them to me. Thank you, Mr. Dilma. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, if you could scroll for a second back right there. So today I was actually like, oh, I want to look at my, um, I'd had the material sent to me, but I wanted to look at a different computer for them. So I went to this page and I clicked on the June the 23rd meeting. If you just click it right there. I was like, I'll click that. Maybe, and then at least when I did it, there's no link here to the materials we'll be covering that day. And it sounds like this is being auto-populated by a different system, but is there any way that, when, when a person goes to the meeting page, the, the materials will be listed. I believe that I could link them because I linked the meeting here. Yeah. I could probably link the materials in that section. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Polk. Just wanted to clarify you said that we're providing the link to the Microsoft Teams meeting. I think the Microsoft Teams invites I receive also have a phone number associated with them. Oh, I want to call in audio only. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to clarify that I, I think people can also just call in on their telephone and that that information is also available on the website. Yes. Yeah. And this in these detailed directions, if you're joining by your phone, it'll let you know how to mute and unmute. Um, and, and then if you want to provide public comment, you would um, just identify that you want to speak at that time. All right. Any additional questions or comments from the committee? Any comments from the public? Yes, uh, Ms. Richardson. Hi, uh, I wanted to compliment. Can you hear me? Yes. I wanted to compliment Christine on the work she's done. It's made a, a big difference uh, being on this end of the information uh, cascade, um, especially since on, I'm online 99% of the time, all the time actually. And what she's done is uh, respond promptly to questions and she's cleaned up problems. Uh, communications online often we couldn't even hear with the microphones being so poor. And, and those problems are, are mostly gone now. Um, but I have to compliment her on how responsive she's been and how prompt in resolving um, communication issues. So thank you. That's all we have. All right. Are there any other project or plan updates? No, there are not. All right. We'll move on to item seven. <clears throat> there are no general. We'll move on to item eight. Agenda item eight committee conference. Does anybody 
Does any members of the committee have any comments to add today? Are done? Agenda item nine, public comments. Are there any comments from the public? Um, this, is, this is Cheryl, can I comment? Yes, please go ahead, Cheryl. Um, I'm wondering if we are able to, if we the public and we AMETs are able to modify these MTP documents, um, is there anything preventing um, uh, a public uh, private works, well, public AMATS workshop to go after some of the outcomes that the public has been requesting for, or for some time. Can, is there a way to negotiate some of the language um, before the criteria are applied to the current nomination list? We'll see what we can do. Are there, are there any other comments from the public? I, all I heard was all I heard was Aaron saying we will see what we can do. Is that correct? That's correct. OK. Uh, looks like no, no other public Thank comments. You. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Are there any objections to approving the motion? I can second. Sorry, motion is approved. We're adjourned.